Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp, oh my goodness. Do I love BetterHelp? We are always telling people to go seek professional help. You always. know, therapy, uh, and not just professional help, but, you know, a licensed therapist. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. And like Nikki said, it's affordable. Yeah, just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Steve. That's better H E L P dot com slash Steve. S-T-E-V-E. This week's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. I have used Manscaped for so long, I can't even believe uh, how happy I am to have Manscaped as a sponsor. These guys rock. Everything that they make is awesome. I'm not just saying that. Like uh, they, I've, uh, they, they've, I've had underwear from Manscaped. I've had shampoo from Manscaped, b- body lotions from Manscaped. It's all awesome. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code STDTY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code STDTY. Naughty or nice, Manscaped is the number one gift on Santa's list. Hello, welcome back to Shitty Bone. I can't say my our name of the show. I can't say it. Oh, no, it's going to be a disaster. I, I, I got nervous. You said you were excited. I got nervous. I'm I gonna, am excited. I'm going to fuck it all up. I'm fucking topic. it all anyway, up. Anyway, welcome to Shit They Don't Tell You. What well, about podcasts? Welcome podcast? to what they both don't. Oh, my God. My name is Stephen welcome Green. Welcome to Shit They Don't Tell You. This is my wife, I'm Nicole Nikki Lima. Green. Oh, my God. And today we are indeed talking about a topic that I, when Nikki said it, of course, I laughed because I'm a child. Yes. It is the topic of Mel's Hole. Love it. I couldn't believe that Steve hadn't heard of it before. Because Never heard of it in my whole life. This man introduced me to Coast to Coast. I didn't, didn't really listen to the radio, but um, sometimes... You're talking about Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. I used to listen to yes. it all the time in the late 90s, early 2000s. Can you give a quick description of the kind of show? It's just the, the most out there show ever. They talk about aliens and conspiracy shit, but, it, but it's so much better than that because if somebody calls the show, right, mm-hmm. and they're like, so I live with an 11 foot spider <laughs> art bell is immediately like uh-huh and, and how is that how is living with an 11 foot spider like there's no like what are you serious there's no like uh, is it's, this a crank it's call? valid everything's it's immediately valid. accepted by the host and i just think that that is such a hilarious show format yeah and he knew exactly what he was doing he's a very totally. very very smart broadcaster it's not like he bought into every call no. that it came in but he was good at interviewing people he was so good at interviewing he people. he was good at just he's a good listener, listening to which them. i think is the key to any good interview when i'm yes. listening to an interviewer i love good listeners who attack the question that maybe came into people my mind people that try to be too smart like oh, okay so you you're saying okay, eleven is a spider, huh? It's like it's not funny. It's not entertaining. Like, it's not entertaining. Just let, let the story be entertaining. <laughs> know, it's not it about sucks. you, bro. But anyway, we lo- I, we love our bell. We, we stand. Bell. We stand our bell. We do. I mean, he's deceased now, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, R.I.P. What a legend, honestly. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I did I'm not. I'm a deep admirer of him. I did not really listen to the show all that much, although the few times I did listen, it was quite entertaining. Um, but I remember Steve being a, a fan of it, and. Um, and so I I don't know how it came up. We talked I don't know. We were talking about conspiracy stuff or like what kind of topics have not, we not covered? And I was like, well, we could do Mel's Hole. And he was like, a what? Excuse a what? Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, you've never heard of Mel's Hole? My god, it's so good. Okay, so even having heard about it, going back and re tell looking up the story again, I was like, this shit is just so good. Okay, so. This story takes place in uh, a little bit west of Ellensburg, Washington. Okay. Mm. Uh, so there's a guy, his name's Mel Waters, and he gets a property that has a hole in the ground that looks kind of like a well, but it's not a well. It's a stone pit that's about nine feet in diameter, <laughs> and the stone wall goes about 15 feet deep, and then the hole extends way longer than that. And the previous owners to this property, as well as all of the neighbors in the whole neighborhood, used this hole as a trash dump. They threw, like, of course. everything in there. Like, they threw, like, old tires, like, appliances, refrigerators. It was, like, bulk trash day in the hole. Wow. Every time. But the thing about it is I that, like that you say bulk trash day <laughs> now that we are homeowners it's part of our life but we didn't i didn't know what that was me neither yeah we Two years ago we have a bulk trash day bulk it's every day. other week so you can't put your bulk trash out like appliances You're or listening like to 30s radio <laughs> 
for everyone in their mid to late 30s. Okay, so you got this. Got a property. That's pretty dope. Has so, a big hole. So you're like chucking fridges in there and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, and the thing is. And they're like, where the hell is all this Mel stuff going? Mel goes, yeah. Mel goes like, how come this hole never fills up? How long have you guys been doing this? The neighbors are like, we've been doing this for years and years and years. Do they ever hear anything? Cause no. Isn't that what you want to do? You want to hear it hit the bottom. Right. No, they don't. Oh. That's a great question. So a couple weird things, like dogs wouldn't go near it. Radio would pick up weird signals. You couldn't see the bottom. Couldn't hear your own echo. Like if you would like try to yell in there, couldn't hear it. What the fuck? Yeah, you can't hear objects hitting the bottom. So there's a big sinkhole. Yeah, it's a huge, but it's but it's like it's like narrow. it's directly down, like it goes directly down, like nine feet wide, a uh, stone for fifteen feet, and then nothing. Wild. Yeah, and so <clears throat> Mel is like, "What the heck?" Do you think it's one of those kids where you find out that China's on the other side of the earth, and then you start to dig a hole to China in your backyard for like two days? I don't think they could bored. be so accurate as to like keep it a perfect circle, a nine nine foot circle. I see. Oh, and before I guess before Mel moved in, um, some of the other neighbors said that there used to be like stone pillars around it, kind of like Stonehenge, but without the the top thingies. Wow. Yeah, but then those were gone, so I don't know what happened to those. Um. Anyway, when Mel moves in, it's just this hole, and he's like, "Huh, this is really weird that you can't." Hit the bottom. I want to know how far down it goes. So he's a fisherman. He has some fishing spool. He takes one of his fishing wire spools and he puts a one pound weight on the end of it and he drops it down to the hole. And he drops it down, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. The whole line goes 4,500 4, feet. 4,500 feet and it didn't hit the bottom. Holy shit. So he brings it back up and then he <laughs> attaches another spool. This time, uh, it goes down almost 10,000 feet and still does not touch the bottom. He even, like, put lifesavers on the end of one because he wanted to see if there was water down there. And so it's like it, if the lifesavers went down, it would dissolve in the water. Mm. D- didn't touch the bottom. No water. Puts the weight back on and keeps adding lines. He keeps adding lines, keeps adding lines, hoping to get the bottom. Uh, at one point, he runs out of spools and... It was 80,000 feet. So over 15 miles, it goes down. Holy shit. And still had not touched the bottom. Yeah. What's the deepest we've drilled into the earth? I don't know. I, I thought it was four miles, but I don't know. Mel's hole was I down. I think it's more than that, but I, I definitely don't know. Okay. So, uh, like I said, uh, dogs would not go near the hole. So um, Mel was like, yeah, my dog won't go near this hole. Um, it tries to like dig its way like it like sigs its feet into the ground, like will not go past a certain point near the hole. Smart dog. And he asked the neighbors, like, are your dogs doing this? And neighbors were like, oh yeah, like our dogs will not go near that hole. No wildlife will go near the hole, actually. There's not even insects that will go around this hole. Birds fly around the hole. Love it. No one goes near I, this I hole. I needed that extra, by the way, <laughs> visualization. Right? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Extra. Um, and then one neighbor goes, yeah, actually... My dog died a few years back and I put its body into the hole. And the, <laughs> a few days later, he sees his dog alive. With He knows it's his dog because it has the same collar on it, but it doesn't respond to its name. It acts like it doesn't know him and then it runs off into the forest. What the fuck? Yeah. Fucking weird. Okay, so... um one day, uh, also, Mel was walking around with his radio. I and his... I just saw somebody's dog. <laughs> that's what I thought, but he has the same collar on. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was the part yeah. that sold me. But I'm like, you know, no one's seen the dog. Well, the neighbor just told a crazy story. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Mel one time said that his radio started picking up old time music, like old this was in 1997, so this old time music was like 1930s ish music. And then he changes the channel and it starts playing a baseball game, which is normal for a radio. But he learns that the game that was broadcasted on his radio was actually played in 1967. The Amazing Mets. Yeah, exactly. That one. <laughs> the way they used to call him that. I don't know. I didn't listen to radio yeah. baseball. Still don't. My dad did, though. Yeah, I just blocked that out. Yeah. It was so boring. So anyway, he calls into Coast to Coast because like, who's ever going to believe the story? But maybe our Art Bell. So our boy Art Bell might listen to this story. So he calls into Coast to Coast on February 21st, 1997. He writes into the show. Well, actually, he writes into the show and then Art calls him. 
So Art calls uh, Mel and um, Mel tells the story, tells him all about the whole. He ends up getting a lot of advice from listeners, like maybe he should use a laser to see how far it goes, or radar signals to see how far down the hole goes, which is really cool, helpful. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, Sonar, bitch. Yeah, and he would uh, update every now and then with the multiple calls that say over time you learn about like the dog story with the neighbor and like the radio thing. So he was updating the callers and the callers were giving him advice and it was kind of cool. But now millions of people know about this, this hole. And then they started putting together by the clues that they were hearing where this hole was by how he was describing it and where he said he was located and stuff. And a few days after uh, one of the broadcasts, Mel came to his property and found his the entrance was blocked, the entrance to his property. And there were helicopters around. There was U.S. military. There was heavy machinery. And he was told that a plane crashed on the property, but there was no reports about a plane crash. And he was told that he couldn't access his property until the crash was cleared up and investigated. So Mel was like, can I Holy talk shit. to who's in charge? So he asked to speak to whoever's in charge. And he was told by a man in civilian clothes that the land was uh, not necessarily his anymore. That uh, oh, no. if he were to try to fight this, that they could easily find a drug lab on the property. And so he better not say anything about they it. seized it. Like they're going to make a post office or yeah. build a road. Yeah. So he was told to leave the property. Uh, Mel threatened to go to the press. And the guy was like, go ahead. No one's going to believe you. <laughs> but you know who would believe him? I know one man. Who's that? My man, Art Bell. Oh, yeah. Him. I was uh, trying to guess. Art, I live with a uh, a fourteen foot mummy, mm -hmm. uh, who, and we both talk about art all day. Oh, what's he think about Rembrandt? <laughs> like it's just imme like yeah, immediate. Yeah, immediate. It's just yeah. like I love oh, that. The does yes, he think the that yes Thomas ending. Kincaid is a real painter, or does he think it's kind of pastiche? He just yes ands the shit yeah, out of every story. Immediately is in. It's love the best. It. He's the best. That's great. I want to listen to it more after hearing the, the, these stories. <laughs> it's worth it. And actually, I went back and listened to, you can listen to clips of this, like Mel calling into the show or like uh, him being on the call with Art Bell. And you can listen to clips. And it's actually really interesting. Maybe we want to listen more. Anyway. Um, so. This name does ring a bell for me. Mel Waters. No, Mel's Hole. The, the oh, Mel's, Mel's Hole thing now with the Art Bell connection rings a bell for me. But rings an Art Bell? I don't get it. But, um, <laughs> but honestly... It's just maybe one of those things that maybe I listened to back then, but I don't remember. But this is kind of like, this is kind of visual. I bet I would remember this because I love stories Yeah, right. Like this. I could never forget a story like this. Yeah, it's really visual. Like you have a hole on your property that goes on forever. Hole. It's bottomless. People been throwing their shit in there. Dog is coming back out alive. Old baseball games are playing right. on a radio. And every little boy dreams about having a bottomless hole. They can do whatever he wants with it. Is that what every boy dreams every about? Every little boy, every single one. We what all would do. you put in there? Well, you're, you start with your penis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was nine foot, foot wide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he calls, he gets on a call with Art Bell and gives an update to the show. And Mel also says during this update that a neighbor saw a dark beam, like one of the darkest beams of light, but not light because it's dark. It's like a dark shadow beam coming out of the hole and going through the clouds darker than anything they'd ever seen before. Mel admits that he didn't actually see the dark beam, but a neighbor, neighbor told a different him neighbor, it. not the dog neighbor. Everyone's telling Mel stories other, about his hole now. Yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of stories around his hole. He's got a really dark ass hole, beams coming out of it. The Coast to Coast listeners said this part of Washington has had a lot of UFO sightings as well and a lot of paranormal activity reports. I've heard that about Washington a couple of times. I've never heard that about Washington. Well, in the mountain regions of Washington. Huh. I have heard this. I mean, I've heard like- We're talking about state, right? Washington yeah, the state. Washington yeah, state. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ellings, Ellington, Ellingsburg, okay. Ellingsburg. Um, so people were like, maybe it's a portal to another dimension. Maybe it's access to hollow earth. Maybe you can time travel through it because that old baseball game thing. So there's like a lot of like spinning a lot theories. Of dumb dumb but, ideas. So I get from, <laughs> I gather from the show that other people call in and, and like talk about it. Of too. course. Okay, so I, I don't listen to the show, but it sounds fun. Okay, so yeah, yeah, people yeah. are calling in. Okay. Well, they they well, Art would do a probably a segment with Mel, uh -huh. and then this is usually how the show format went, and then people would call throughout, like after or or with Mel still on the yeah. line, and then ask him questions about it. That's cool. Yeah, it was great. And then um, and then sometimes if a topic was really hot, he would like carry it into a couple nights in a row. Yeah. So this is what happened. Okay. He kept getting updates like every couple of days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that in the beginning, okay. 
So um, on mm-hmm. Coast to Coast, Art says a TV crew went out to Ellensburg to investigate the area and they couldn't find the hole, but they did find a ton of military boot prints and other evidence of military activity being in the area. So then, okay, Mel agrees to be on a call an- another few days later with an update, but when Art Bell called Mel, Mel didn't pick up the phone. It took three years oh, before shit. Mel was ever heard from again. Yeah. So when he eventually is heard from again, uh, he says he after after that call, he was offered $3 million a year to lease his property, but under the conditions that he had to sign an NDA he, and he had, to leave the com- he had to leave the country immediately and never come back. So he took the deal and he ended up living in Australia for two years, but he, en- he ends up missing his family and so he wants to come back. He was warned not to do that. Wow. They were like, you better not. That's part of the deal is like, you never speak of this again. So he misses his family, comes back anyway. He tries to like do it undercover, but... Um, he, uh, when he comes back uh, two years later, he agrees to get on the phone call with Art, but then again, he doesn't show up. So he says that on the day, this is now a year after that, because it's three years, uh, he says on the day that he was supposed to come on the show, he was on a bus to visit his nephew, and then on the bus, there was this altercation that happened, and somebody called the cops. Well, the cops came, and everybody was transferred to a different bus, and then he blacks out. When he wakes up, he wakes up in an alley in San Francisco, completely different state, and he finds out that 12 days have passed. His wallet and his keys are missing. His arm hurts, and he looks at his arm, and there are needle holes and tape marks from an IV. Uh, he starts to taste blood in his mouth, and he realizes his back teeth are missing, but has no recollection of what happened. He never makes it back to his property uh, because legal action is filed against him for building all these unapproved things like a septic tank, power lines, paved mm-hmm. roads, things that he did this not is build. This a bucket the guy. Yeah. He didn't build these things because uh, he wasn't there for two years. But um, he ended up losing everything. He lost his family. He lost his uh, property. He lost uh, everything. And then after the phone call, this update, he his bank account ended up being empty. So completely Jesus. just like lost everything. Okay. Okay, so like I said before, Art said that a TV crew looked for a hole but didn't find evidence of of a hole or couldn't find the hole but found evidence of military activity and found that the no-fly zone had been expanded to cover Mel's property. Um, There was a website called Terra Server, which was like Google Earth, but before Google Earth, uh, they had the entire area blacked out, which that was confirmed. What state was Mel's hole in? Washington. Washington, yeah. It's crazy. You just asked this. Washington. Yeah, no. Sorry. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm visually. He did w- attaching... wake up in San Francisco, which was weird, but um, almost everything else takes place in Washington until we get to this next part. But uh, what when he was doing this update and talking about all this stuff, people were like, I don't know anymore. Like, this is getting too weird, too crazy. I don't know. This guy seems like he's dragging it out. We think it's a hoax. There were lots of skeptical callers that said, like, maybe Mel saw the blacked out area on Terra Server and then made up a whole story around it. But Terra Server didn't actually have that area blacked out until six months after Mel had made the first call. There you go. Wayback Machine, dude. Don't fuck with Wayback Machine. Don't fuck with Wayback Machine. Wayback Machine got your ass. So then after this update, um, a Native American tribe contacts Mel and asks if he wants to um, come to Nevada to help him investigate another hole that they have. Whoa. Yeah. They have another bottomless hole. And in Nevada of all places. In Nevada. Home of Area 51. A home of other what? UFO sightings and Big what? Times. Other paranormal activity. Let's go. Arizona, Nevada, Mount Shasta, Washington. Okay, let's get to the point. What's the point? Is the Hedron Collider trying to open a new dimension? There is no mention of the Hedron Collider. Where is that located? It's in like fucking Europe. It's like in a bunch of, it's like so big that it's in a bunch of places. Okay, yeah, so no. Okay. Well, I mean, unless it's all underground. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's all connected. It's underground. I have no fucking clue. Maybe. Oh. I think it's all uh, up and up for your own speculation. Okay. But um, don't spoil the story because there's a lot to uncover oh, shit. Okay. in this uh, story. So yeah, this Native American tribe was like, yo, we heard your story on Coast to Coast and we got one too. Come fucking check it out. So Mel's like, yeah, I got nothing to lose. I already lost everything. I'm going to go out to Nevada. So he goes out to Nevada 
And this second hole was not located on their uh, reservation, but it was actually located on public land, which was occupied by the Basque, which is an ethnic group from between Spain and France that came to America in the mid 1800s and settled there. And they had been using the the land for hundreds of years to herd sheep. So the Basque said the hole was there as long as their people could ever remember, which was at least 200 years. And they considered the area around the hole to be sacred. It was the same size diameter as Mel's hole, which was nine feet. But instead of stone, this one had a metal collar. And then it was metal as far down as the eye could see. It was also warm to the touch. So oh, if you, fuck. Yeah. And the metal... Like New York subway shit. Yeah, but here's what's weird about it is that the metal didn't make any sound or vibration. So Mel accidentally dropped a tool on the collar around it and it, it was completely silent on impact. They ran some experience, uh, experiments on this hole. Number one, they decided to lower a bucket of ice into the hole because it was so warm. They wanted to see how fast it would melt. So they kept some ice with them at the surface at a, as a control. And when the surface ice melted, they brought the bucket back up. Well, the bucket of ice did not melt at all. It it wasn't melted, but it also wasn't even ice anymore. It was like not wet and not cold. It was like cubes of salt, like the same shape as the ice. It was still ice. It looked like what ice, in the fuck? but it felt like salt. Um, and they tried to you melt. Mel's like, I miss my hole. My hole is not this extreme. <laughs> well, he never put a bucket of ice in his oh, hole. Maybe true. it would have happened. Maybe it we don't know. And now he can't access his hole anymore. He's like, my hole is so The government took <laughs> it. So uh, they take this bucket of ice and they're like, oh shit, it didn't melt at all. So they tried to um, they tried to melt it with an open flame, but instead of melting, it catches on fire, and then it keeps burning and never the flame just doesn't go out so so this mel guy, told the cops please tell me he didn't after what happened last time no he did not tell the cops but he does go back on the show i mean oh, this shit. is these updates are all i see the, via coast okay. to coast so it's like he calls in with another update this is one of this is the next update after he loses everything he calls back in with another update months later and it was this is what happened i hope he's not telling him where he is though we said Nevada. I know. You know That's what, what I, mean? I keep thinking. Like, poor guy, dude. Like, don't take away the Basque's hole. You're already poor. You had to take the bus to Nevada. You I know. <laughs> getting wrecked. Exactly. You got no bank account. Gotta have the Native Americans help feed you. Like it's Thanksgiving. Well, they have lots of sheep. Yeah, lots of That's sheep. True. Well, yeah, it was interesting because it <clears throat> it wasn't it. It didn't say. Like, I don't know if the Basque and the Native American tribe that contacted him were the same group of people I because. See. They said that like it was like the Basques were next to their reservation, you know. I understand. Um, so anyway, they light this shit on fire and it burns for months. But they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like during Al Davis's flame, before they realized that it was burning for months, like they're like, okay, let's put this aside. It keeps burning. We'll see how long it burns. They put it over here. They kept sending down buckets of ice at different times. Most of the time, like two thirds of the time, it melted normally. It was just normal ass ice. But one third of the time, it transformed the same way, where it turned into like weird salt ice. Um, so then, after doing all these experiments, one of the bass guys. <laughs> these ice based experiments, yeah, yeah. mostly. What the hell? I don't know. <laughs> one of the bass guys says, I want to go down the hole. <laughs> I volunteer as tribute. And the uh, everyone else in the circle is like, no, <laughs> like don't, what the fuck, like don't go in this hole. I call that the Ghostbusters too. Right? It's like we'll put you on a rope, we'll throw you down the hole, we'll see what's down the hole. It's like this ice just fucking turned into salt <clears throat> ice and lit on fire forever. Yeah, what the fuck? But uh, yeah, this guy's like, yeah, I'll go, I want to see what's in the hole. Everyone's like, I don't think it's a good idea. We should not do that. Instead, we will send one of our sheep down in the hole that's actually a pretty good good idea i think so as well yeah. we're gonna take a break and then when we come back i'll oh, tell you good. what happened you bitch to this that sheep. was good thank you that was really good. today's episode is brought to you by better help better help oh my goodness do i love better help we are always telling people to go seek professional help you always. know therapy uh and not just professional help but you know a licensed therapist in the field of study that you 
personally are having an issue with, it always, always, always helps to get a second opinion. Even if you think you don't need therapy, you probably do need therapy. There's always something that will give you tools to work out future problems, pattern recognition of, of things that you didn't even realize that you were attracting in your life and you uh, just need someone to tell you like, hey, like look at your pattern and, and help you break it. I personally use BetterHelp um, and I linked up with a therapist that I didn't really connect with right off the bat. And BetterHelp makes it so easy to just find a new therapist if you don't connect with the first one that you uh, get paired with. So I was able to switch my therapist right away and then I connected with the the next one really well. And she gave me uh, quite a few tools at that time to process what I was going through. And I for a fraction of the cost of what traditional therapy goes And from for. your own, from our house. Yeah, and from our house. It was like... Um, video conferencing you could do text messaging you could do phone calls you get one phone call or video message a week but then you have unlimited text messages with your therapist as well so if i was going through the issue that we were working through during the week before my appointment i can still text her at any time and she could help coach me through it and so that was super helpful and just the cost alone was just like such a, a good deal for um getting the same help that I would get if I was paying the normal rate. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. And like Nikki said, it's affordable. Yeah, just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Steve. That's BetterHelp.com slash Steve. S-T-E-V-E. This week's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Santa baby. I only have one wish this year. All I want this holiday season is for my man to have smooth jingle balls. Really? Yes. Well, I have more wishes than that, to okay. be honest. But this, okay. But the ad, cop the ad copy easy. told me to say one wish. Okay, got it. Got I got have it. more wishes. Okay. Please don't forget my other wishes. But Manscaped takes the cake. They answered my call with the performance package 4.0 so I don't have to find Santa's beard in my man's pants again. You know what I'm saying, ladies? Slap it high. Let's go. Go to manscaped.com, use the code STDTY for 20% off and free shipping. By the way, I have used Manscaped for so long, I can't even believe uh, how happy I am to have Manscaped as a sponsor. These guys rock. Everything that they make is awesome. I'm not just saying that. Like uh, they, I've, uh, they, I've, I've had underwear from Manscaped. I've had shampoo from Manscaped, b body lotions from Manscaped. It's all awesome stuff. Yeah, and this upgraded Performance Package 4.0, you'll find the Signature Lawn Mower 4.0. This electric trimmer has the proprietary advanced skin safe technology. It's the perfect trimmer to keep his Christmas tree trimmed. It's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. It's a gift for his candy cane as it is a gift for you. I have had the same one for years. Also, their boxers are anti-chafing. They really are. They're, they're, they're beautiful. Very smooth. I really enjoy and them. And they just launched their new body buffer. This 100% antibacterial body scrubber is just what you need, Steve, to keep fresh and clean this holiday season. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code STDTY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code STDTY. Naughty or nice, Manscaped is the number one gift on Santa's list. Okay, so we're back. And where we left off was the Basque and Mel and a few Native Americans uh, decided to send a sheep down into this hole. Now, as you can imagine, the sheep, just like the dogs, did not want to go in this hole. Yeah. Was so fucking pissed. He was in a, it was in a crate, and they start lowering the, the crate, and the, the sheep is just kicking. It's buying, it's bye buying. It's like ah, get me out of here. Mm. It's it's like kicking the shit out of this crate, just trying to get out. I feel really freaking bad for the mm, sheep, right? Too. So it's getting lowered down, and it's kicking, it's kicking, and at a thousand feet, it stops moving, and they start feeling a humming sensation coming from the rope in the crate that they were that they lowered it down with. It's like a humming sensation. They leave it there for 30 minutes. Then after 30 minutes, they bring the, the sheep back up, and the crate was unchanged. Exactly the same. Looked at the crate. The sheep also looked exactly the same. 
looked fine, but it was definitely dead. Like, it was not moving. What? It was just like, it looked like a sheep just fucking... So there's some kind of gas in there or some shit? I don't know. So um, the Basque, they knew how to butcher a sheep because they that's what all they do is they, they herd sheep and they... Um, oh no, they're gonna and, try to eat it? No, no, they just wanna see like what's oh, what's, what's inside this sheep, like what, what happened? They wanna do an autopsy. They wanna see what happened. So um, they take the sheep over to a table and they cut it open to do an autopsy. And they s- describe the sheep as looking cooked from the inside. Also, taking up almost the entire inside of the sheep was a giant, what looked like a, a giant tumor. Uh, it's like this giant black tumor. And then the tumor starts moving. What the fuck? <laughs> so they cut the tumor open and out of the tumor comes what was described as a fetal seal. What, what are you talking about? Like a baby seal. And it comes out, it just like they cut it open and, cu- and the seal comes out and it's attached with like an umbilical cord to the tumor. And so it's it looks like a baby seal, but it had eyes like a human. And it looks at the guys, like it looks at all the men. It's like, what the fuck, where am I? Their presence. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like looking at the seal, but everyone's kind of like uh, and looking back and forth at each other. Like, let's put it and, in the hole. <laughs> well, Mel can kind of like it. It goes over immediately, goes to the edge of the table, and Mel can kind of gets the sense that it wants to go back in the hole. So he picks it up and he puts it near the hole. It doesn't go in the hole right away. And also Mel said that it was covered in this like slimy substance. Dude, Mel is so chill. I know. I'm like, why there would you touch? all these stories. He's so chill. Why would you touch that? Maybe he just felt like a guy that has nothing left to lose. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, he, uh, he, cover- he was covered in the slime substance and it smelled like ozone. I don't know what that means, but that's what. It- I don't know. No, what that it means. smells like ozone. It had ozone. a smell. So um, the seal didn't jump in the hole right away. It was like, it just wanted to watch the people. Like it was like looking at the people, like just like it had never seen people before, obviously. And then the, the people were like, well, we've never seen you basically. And like, they were just kind of like studying each other for like two hours. Two hours? <laughs> yeah, for two hours. They just like watched the seal, wanted to see what the seal this was going to do. This is definitely pre-smartphone. Yeah. Because if this is in the smartphone era, I think I could do that for eight minutes and then I'm probably like, I'm on my same, phone. I'm like, same. you know, checking out like, okay, like, what's going right, on with fancy seal, tonight? Yeah. Let me just check my cryptos real quick. Exactly. I'm like, okay, or at least yeah, like I'd Instagram it or like put it on a broadcast. Any of it. At Instagram live or whatever. Any of it. Anyway. um, So yeah, I mean, everyone would call it fake anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so the seal and them guys are like studying each other for two hours and then the seal just jumps into the hole. Um, here's the thing. Before Mel went to Nevada, he was diagnosed with advanced esophageal cancer and given only six, six months to live. But after this encounter, he ended up being cancer free. And he thinks that he was cured by this creature. By this, this um, ma- magic seal. Prenatal seal. seal. Yeah. Yes. And, says, and I can picture him telling that to Art Bell. And Art Bell saying like, oh, and how, how far along was it? <laughs> Just immediately. Yeah. What a legend. He also feels like he had kind of a transcendent experience during that time. Whoa. Like it was a very like. Like touching like dis- a frog kind of thing. Like, like um, you know how like they, they release that. Like DMT? Yeah, DMT shit. Um, I don't know. I've never tried that, but like maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, they just, the whole thing seemed very kind of spiritual is what they, uh, what Mel described so it as. And um, so a few months later. Mel comes back on coast to coast and he gives an update. And he's like, okay, so you know that bucket of ice that they lit on fire? One of the bass guys kept it in his cabin and he left it burning in his stove to keep warm because it was kind of cold. Okay, it's cold in the desert and it's, you know, cold time. He's like, it's kind of a little, it's like, it's little like right now. Hack. It's actually really freezing right it's now. Kind of a sick little life in Nevada. Hack for me. I can vouch that in Nevada, I would like a, a burning bag of ice salt ice yeah i to keep warm i wouldn't like that actually. if I, I i don't want it but if i had no other thing to keep warm i'm like that's eh, not so bad i just wouldn't like it because you would probably knock it over at some point probably but he kept it in the stove smart okay so it burned for months and it sucked all the moisture out of the air so it was always dry his skin was always dry but it's kind of like Nevada. that anyway yeah Nevada. when he would boil water the steam would be pulled into the stove that's just nevada too yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then one day the stove crashed through the floor and into the ground underneath the cabin. It was still warm though, so 
he just patched up the hole and used it to heat the cabin. Dude, this is the cheapest motherfucker I've ever heard about. When do you just go get a Duralog? Well, they live off the land, Steve. Holy shit, dude. So a couple weeks later, he comes home and he finds his entire cabin has collapsed and turned into dust. Was it worth it to <laughs> save on fucking logs? And so he moves in with his brother. Oh my and he's God. just like, he's living with his brother. And he's like, can we bring my fire? And his brother's like, no, we're done with the fire. Well, yeah. He was like, oh, my fucking cabin. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, so he, he like um, comes around to his cabin like a month later uh, to just check and like see, I don't know. Well, he's just checking on his cabin and he sees that the stove is now five feet under the ground and that the hole that's being created is perfectly smooth. Oh shit, it's a new hole. It's making being another born. hole. Yeah. So um yeah, they're like they're trying to get the stove out. They can't get it out. They ended up having to use a giant crane to get the stove out eventually. And the Basques said that during this time they were sometimes visited by the seal creature. And they felt that it was a benevolent presence and it was very spiritual. Does it just waddle in and out? Like a seal? Yeah, it like comes out of the hole and communicates with them. Oh, it comes out of the hole. Yeah, yeah. Like out they, of the new hole. Or I don't know. Maybe they they visited him they maybe it visited, this it visited them like spiritual I don't know. Independently. Well it, it no, like it didn't come out of the, the new hole, hole. The new hole, not the new hole. The new okay. hole's only five feet deep. Word, word, word. When they okay. tried to get the stove out, they were able to get the stove out with a crane, and they did it because so the seal thing keeps visiting the Basque, and um, the Basque are like, okay, we like, the, we feel safe with it, like we don't feel like it's like malicious. We feel like it's a nice creature. We like the prenatal seal, and they're like, <laughs> they also noticed that after the seal kept visiting them they they'd see like brightly colored birds circling the hole now mm, like so like some spiritually like yeah so they felt like it was just a whole like spiritual experience although they did they tried to shoot the birds and the of birds were did. immune to bullets so the birds could not be shot of course they did but i don't know why they wanted to shoot the birds well these guys are very scientific <laughs> yeah that's what you true, do yeah you, you understand how science is right you got to try things <laughs> yeah but hey, why don't we, hey, why don't we try shooting it? Yeah, I think that's, that is what happened. Hey, like, what if we lower some ice in there? They're like, maybe we can check it out if we shoot it. So they 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 didn't shoot. Hey, it. what if we use the silly ice trays this time, huh? <laughs> like the ones that are different shapes. Very scientific, right? But, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you know, um, my kind of people. So yeah, they tried to shoot the birds. Birds could be shot, but the Basque also believed that the seal was communicating them to them through the radio using signals that they could understand. And the seal was warning them that the ice is really dangerous and could lead to the destruction of the entire planet if it was in the wrong hands. That's why they eventually took the stove out and they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so um, Art Bell asks if there's any recording of this language, like the seal communicating and the That's a really yeah. reasonable question. And there is. Mel's like, yeah, the Basque actually recorded everything. With what? So, well, they had a tape recorder. It's they didn't use a video camera? Well, it was 1997 or Everyone had or video cameras. 2000. I had a camera. I didn't. The rich people had it. What? There's camcorders. I know, but they, but they were expensive. They, they were like $1,000. Well, sure, but yeah, people had camcorders. They did, but it was really expensive. You okay. think it was like Tribe Out in the Middle of Nowhere has a camcorder? By the way, your iPhone is $1,000. Everything's $1,000. No, but an iPhone was until 2007. I know. And when it first came out, it was $250. It was? Yeah. Well, you had a cool plan, huh? If I had Verizon. One of those Verizon people. It was uh, AT&T, but anyway, didn't get very good service. So, um, Art gets Mel to agree to come back on the show, but with evidence this time. Mel says he's going to go back to Nevada. He's going to bring the recordings. He's going to bring pictures. He's going to bring everything he, he could find. And he's going to come back on the show and show like all the evidence. But. But. Exactly. God damn it. With these fucking stories. Mel is never heard from again. Eventually, like Art keeps calling and eventually the line's disconnected. At, and this was after a five year long journey of updates well, yeah because the guy you know you can only live action role play for so long before you have to show nudes and so then that's exactly what yeah the people yeah were saying was like well maybe the story got so fucking crazy Come on. How's like he gonna how can that? you keep up with the hoax but here's some stuff that was confirmed okay because the story is just really interesting to a lot of people especially with just the mysterious ending of him just disappearing and never heard from like again there is a tourist trap called Mel's Hole off of, <laughs> off of a freeway <laughs> so the terrace server um, had that did have that area blocked yeah, out blocked that out. he described um, but Google Maps 
has it back up. Okay. Like, and you can see it now. And um, people were like, you know, oh, there's nothing there or whatever. But if the government did take it over, they could have covered the hole up. Right. Photoshop, clone stamp, easy mode. Right. But there was this interesting, like, if you go to Google Maps, this is in the area of the hole. And you can kind of see. A hole. A hole. Uh, with shadow. We'll send this to Mark. We'll have Mark. Yeah. Mark could put um, it on the screen. Put this on the screen for the video confirmations. Yeah. That will probably so, be in the thumbnail as well. It looks like a hole that might have been covered up. Okay. So people were really fucking interested. Like what the heck happened to Mel? Like Google Maps has it back up. We want to see some stuff. So they went to the site and they did take some pictures. Um which I'll show Mark, because when Mel had been on some of the calls, he was describing the place, obviously, and he did describe that on his property there were two older buildings that had, and one of them had collapsed. And so people went to the site and they found something that looks like an older building that collapsed mm. on the property. And then they actually found a nine foot diameter stone walled off hole that had barbed wire all around it. And they said, there's a picture of it. And, and they did nothing else. They well, didn't lower anything into it. They didn't set and put ice in it. It ended up being a well. Son of a gun. So it did have a bottom. And uh, that was maybe not his well. Or the government maybe turned it into, turned into a into well. Turned into a well, duh. Okay. What's more likely? It's probably cheap to do that, too. Get okay. It. So the actual hole has never been found. But there are a lot of people that claim to find the area, blah, blah, blah. There also has never been a record of any Mel Waters ever living in the area. But people were like, well, he could have been using a pseudonym. Sure. Obviously, like that would make sense. Um, something that does hurt the credibility of the story is the lack of pictures. Because Art Bell asked many, many times mm -hmm. for pictures, but mm -hmm. Mel always like had an a excuse. Good like, reason, like a it was good like catfish. he would forget, or he said the uh, cameras don't work near the hole, yeah. or he like said, Oh, I have some, and then he forgets to send them. Yeah. He's like, I'll send them to you, and then it doesn't come. Oh, sorry, my mom's sick. But the we another Weird thing though is that like what's the motive? People are like, well, like if it is a hoax, he okay. never tried to make any money off of it. Never tried to sell, sell any merch. Would you like me to handle that one? Okay. Well, one more thing oh, is please. that okay. um, is that over the years, this was five years long. Mel also stayed extremely consistent with the story. Like Art Bell tried many times to trip him up because mm -hmm. Art he does that right. Like yeah. he would try to trip him up yeah. so many times, and he never it never worked. Like he his story was just super. Consistent. Hey. Well, okay, go ahead. Maybe our maybe With Mel the was part of like human evolution. Like maybe Mel was part of like, you know, he had some kind of autism or something. He could remember every fucking single detail of what was his story that he told. Right? Who knows? Okay. Okay, but my thing about the attention thing. So there's a very famous Art Bell coast to coast um, segment okay. about a guy who <laughs> said, um, he he calls in and he's he. This is after um. Bob Lazar tells everybody about Area 51. Love him or hate him, we didn't know what the fuck Area 51 was, and Bob Lazar brought that to the public atten public's attention. And and then um, um, this guy calls into Art Bell, and he's like, I have been working at Area 51, um, and he like goes into a very detailed story mm. about how he works at Area 51, how he gets how he goes into Area 51, and what they're working on, and all the different like like spacecraft that they have there, like that are of alien extraterrestrial origin. It's like a very, very thorough detail story. And it eventually, um, the story like heightens and heightens and heightens to the point where the guy's like getting chased by like fucking police and shit. And like, uh -huh. there's like noises on the call and it's like fucking crazy. It's like one of the most legendary moments yeah. from that show. And it was a confirmed hoax later. Like but the, how how was it confirmed? The guy was like yucking it up after. But how? Oh, the guy like admitted that he faked the whole fucking thing. Yeah, but if you were threatened, wouldn't you admit sure, that sure, too? Sure, sure, sure. But that's from like so let's here, say so Mel was like threatened, like he'd be like, "Yeah, I made the whole thing up." I know you're not actually arguing that. No, but, I know. I'm just saying. I'm trying are, to devil's advocate. But here we arrive at the concrete wall of like yeah. you know you can only you can tell a story so good yeah that people will say well of course you get. You know, the people that are behind if this. If there really is a big cover up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they would threaten you and tell you to. Then they would do to, that, but it's like, 
bro. They're going to try to Eventually, ruin your you credibility. you got to prove something, dude. you got to fucking have some kind of thing that everyone can look at and go, oh, yeah. okay, that looks like evidence to me. I agree. Yeah, I, I know agree. you do, but I'm just saying yeah. you're devil's advocating. I just want to make, make sure that that's very clear out yeah, there because yeah. I know exactly what you're doing, but sometimes it does not come oh, across. Oh, some people are yeah, okay. They're like, wait, Nikki it. really doesn't think that they like, <laughs> It's so funny. But anyway, no. So that's my thing about it is like some people just – want to watch the world burn right like it's that funny you just want to tell a fun story Alfred like quote. a troll story yeah, i just want to fuck around and like can get a little bit of attention and like now everyone in the country is talking about me right now for yeah a couple but days. like they don't know who he is because he's using a pseudonym it's kind of better that way so you get to get your yucks yeah and then you get to like kind of sit at the bar and listen to people talk about you even though mm. they don't know it's you it's kind of fucking awesome like uh like internet forum exactly yeah internet forum trolls like that's exactly like reddit can't sleep exactly reddit, no, no sleep, sleep no which sleep which is like one of the greatest places for reddit, creative no writing yeah, ever. Yeah. those people are brilliant but yeah that's the idea right like it's just yeah for the for the for the lulls i guess yeah um i mean i don't really have any arguments other than this is a fucking great story. Yeah, though. exactly. And and he kept it going for five years. That's dedication too. That's yeah. better than my club bunch. Disappears for three years, comes back, and is like this. All this shit happened. So good. And also, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like if I was trying to troll and tell like like a lot of the no sleep stories, what I like about them is that it feels creepy because it feels like it could happen. Yeah, plausible. Like this just goes off to crazy land. Like, how do you invent? Cutting open a sheep that has yeah. a tumor that has a baby seal in it. I just honestly. It's like so wild. I mean, how did Kevin Smith come up with the movie Tusk? Like, I just think that sometimes you can just go to fucking La La Land and like. Yeah. Just find out where the weed's going to take you. The fucking magical seal. Yeah. I mean, well, someone who is only on some kind of drug comes up with a fucking seal was talking. So the government has not seized the Nevada hole. I wonder if we can find it. Hey, now that we live here, Shit, they don't tell you what if we just turn our lives into trying would, to hunt conspiracies down? I would fucking love it. Like, you know, there's Bigfoot, there's, yeah, if there's we're not gonna Loch Ness have kids, monsters. We, we should be chasing something that we can never really get. You can never find. You can never find, right? <laughs> it, like, we should be obsessing over finding yeah. something. Uh, and dedicating our lives really to it. I'm fucking down. I'm pretty down to too. try to find the bass hole. Um, if you know, because nobody's doing it. No one's no one's doing it. People no one's calling for Bigfoot. Bigfoot people, exactly. Hack. But no one's looking for bass hole with the I'm, magic seal in I'm it. Pretty in. And uh, and there's like a lot of stories about Sedona, like a lot of stories about Mount Mount Shasta. So there's like some weird shit that we could go on adventures and try to Listen. find. But um, we'll start harassing Native Americans. <laughs> Hey, I know you know about this. Hey. I know you know. There's actually um, there's <laughs> one a Native American representative that has done videos on Mel's Hole. Like, really? You can you can actually go on YouTube. There's like if you go look this up, there's like forums of people thinking they have proof. Like, there's people going back and forth arguing whether it's real or not. And <laughs> like, there's one guy that's like I forget what his name is though, um, and I don't want to b- botch it. But he um, he swear like he takes pe- the camera to a location where like this is the furthest you can go before you'll get in trouble. So and there's like warning signs like do not enter signs and stuff. And he goes, if you go past this fence, yeah, some people, youth, youth he's like, some authorized. people will just disappear. Like what the fuck? he said that there's been disappearances. Like if just don't fucking go past film that fence. Film that, dude. Film that. Film that. Well, he can't film it or he might disappear. Oh, true. So film um, it with a sheep. Use a sheep and film Another it. thing is, yeah, put a little put a sheep. Put a camera, GoPro. GoPro with a sheep. GoPro your sheep. The hole also isn't geologically possible because it would collapse on itself if it was that deep when that narrow and stuff. Oh, I didn't um, know that. I know. That's a good point. So there's that. There's like a lot of like, eh, you know, yeah. but it's so like it's such a, good, a crazy tall, story a good with like when you look on like having that, you know, Google Maps blocking that out instead of Terra yeah. Server blocking it's that good. out and and like people, the TV crew actually went there and found like evidence of military boot prints and yeah. like there was military activity there why you know and then maybe the the tv guy's like man it's all these military boot prints and then maybe the the associate producer's like hey dude aren't you wearing boots and he's like oh yeah yeah you got the i got the <laughs> rv navy store it's fucking tight <laughs> stupid <laughs> You just don't know, though. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it is like that. I know. But they were going specifically there to investigate this, this but that's thing. What, but then again, you're not arguing that. But yeah. that's But that's the funny thing about like, well, how do you explain the military boots? It's like, yeah. it's pretty explainable. Yeah. I mean, this is very like, <laughs> there's like zero evidence. So yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah. 
it's not even like I can fight for the other side. Well, but you're trying. It's, you have the to thing try. that makes the story fun, and this is exactly. what Art Bell was so good at, was yes. is that like it doesn't matter if it's true or not. Accept. It's a really fucking yep. fun, like intriguing, entertaining story. We, I could, you know what? I will do an episode about some great Art Bell stories because I've I listened to that show for a long time. Yeah. But. He was a genius at that, at listening to what the audience wanted to hear. Yeah. Like he, he, he could tell what the audience wanted to hear and not necessarily having to inj- interject himself into it as much. Mm-hmm. Like some of these radio guys love to hear themselves yeah, talk so exactly. fucking much, but he really could sit back and just kind of, if the caller could really handle it, right? And mm-hmm. they could tell the story like in a se- sequence that made sense. But if they couldn't, he was really good at, at guiding them and helping them along. Another thing I will say is that I listened to the <clears> clips <throat> of the show and he does sound very convincing. Like even if it's a lie, like it doesn't sound like he thinks it's a lie. Yeah. Like it doesn't sound like someone trying to put together a story or whatever. He's very like convincing, genuine. Like it's some be. really good acting. If if it's you know the man, if someone that knows it's a lie. Not that I'm completely shitting on all this or anything, yeah. but I'm just sticking up for the skeptics here, be- only because absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I go, straight. I can go back and forth all day because I'm like, well, if what if he did drugs and yeah. saw all the shit and he d- believes it's real and that's why he sounds convincing because he actually believes it happened. Just to be clear though, this is not Team Steve versus Team Nikki. No, I could easily be sitting in Nikki's. Chair arguing for the story in, in playful sense, yeah, and then Nikki shooting it all down. Like th- we do this all the time. We love doing this shit. We love doing this shit. I, I live doing it back and forth, like while I'm listening to the story. Same. Like, well, what about this? And then I go look it up, and then I'm like, okay, well, the, but if that happened, then what about this? And yeah. you like to go, okay, I'm a skeptic. Okay, I'm a believer. Okay, I'm a skeptic. Exactly. Okay, I'm a believer. It's, I wanna, it's, like, it's I want to go back both and ways. Forth. Yeah, it's really fun both ways. It is. But the um, the Manti Teo catfisher. I don't know if you know who that is. No. But, He's a LA Chargers um, football player. Don't worry, I won't talk about football for too long. Um, he was catfished for years mm-hmm. by a man who had done such a good job with his voice on the phone that it sounds like a chick. Oh. And it sounds like a chick, like as sure as I'm fucking sitting there. Because he was able to use the way that the phone kind of morphs your voice a little bit. Yeah. And he's able to pitch his voice enough to make that really convincing. And there's a great documentary about this on Netflix right now huh. um, that maybe we should talk about at some point. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's catfishing. That's a good topic. Yeah, it's really good. But like this guy was <laughs> so good at it that um, they convinced not just Manti Teo, who was like in a, a years long relationship with this person, mm-hmm. but they convinced the whole community that she was sick and like they were raising money for her and stuff. Because like eventually the lie was just getting rougher and rougher, and like that wall kept on getting further and further against the person's back. Yeah, and they're just like, I can't prove it anymore. <laughs> fuck, I can't meet you because I'm sick and all this shit. Yeah, Manti Teo being a good dude, he's like, fucking, let's raise money, let's help you and all this shit. Yeah. It's wild, but the convincing is what you do if you're the liar. You got to be good at it. Yeah, you, you got if you're gonna sell a story to millions of people, you better be good at it. Right, right, and that's what you know. Credit to them. Hats off. And that's shit. why. So I, I, along those lines, <laughs> when we tell conspiracy theory stories on this show, yeah, it we just love hearing the story. I right, love it's stories. not like I'm addicted to stories. There, I, I don't ever go like. This shit's I'm in. real. Yeah, no. I'm in. Although Hollow Earth is hilarious, though. Yeah, Hollow Earth is hilarious. You think it's hilarious? I thought that was really interesting. I thought it was real, by the way. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I mean. I love the yeah. where it can get nuts. Yeah. Like I love that shit. Yeah. That's my favorite. Well, shit. Well, nuts, but with like some level of credibility that enough to like make you go, huh? Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Like have that little it bit of maybe. That. Like colonel. that cur- like Admiral Admiral Bird yes. going down there and he's such a like very reliable, responsible yes. Uh, integrous person you can build the lie on that and him saying that there are pe- as a species of, of people living down there that have lived for 800 years that like i mean like each individual lives for 800 years but the best part right yeah so they'll take that which yes he was saying a lot of stuff back then yeah but then like it turns into like and then there's giants and like there's people there who giants. live forever and but you know what i mean like he yeah. wasn't saying that no no, no. he just reported on what he saw yeah so you take the kernel of truth you build yeah on top of it and it gets fucking nuts and that's where it, where it gets really exactly. good for me personally yes like i fucking love that people shit. start it's like a telephone thing where exactly. people start adding their own shit on it and then my fa- it's my yeah. favorite genre because i've i've looked into like okay the, the first of all 
never went to the moon. Second of all, the moon's fake. Correct. Um, it's made out of plasma. It's actually flat. It's made out of plasma. No, actually, it's the moon's real, but it's an it's a hollow alien space base. Love that one. Um, and they're spying on us. They've been spying on us for years. And um, all we have to do is get behind it. Because the dark side of the moon is the back of a spaceship, yeah. you see like fucking thrusters, and you can go in through there. But guess what, assholes? We we, we can't we can't produce that photography because the moon is geo orbiting or what is it called? Um, tidal locked. So yeah. like it's always facing the same, yeah, direction same direction to the Earth, so we don't see the thrusters exactly perfectly. Dummies, dummies. I watched a lot of videos on all of the theories. <laughs> it's like there's so the many theories the about best. the moon because anything that's like mysterious hasn't been kind of like explored all the way you can make up whatever the shit you want about it you really because can. like there's not enough evidence to prove that your story is wrong exactly <laughs> like have you been to the moon no you haven't so how do you know it's not made of plasma well that's why the flat <laughs> earth one was one of my favorites as well yeah because like you can't prove the earth is round you can't like independently prove the yeah, earth is yeah, round yeah and so like no matter what you have to go to some official place and then like well that's already a scam because like it's an official place so like you're already fucked yeah so like until people can build you know rockets in their garage and i'm not saying people aren't but like you know the average person no but then even if you can build rockets in your garage and go all the way out into space there's a firmament according to the flat earth people so you can't even you can't it. even go up to the so, space and so they're smart enough to know not to do that but yeah. then how are they ever going to prove it <laughs> you can't prove it because it's if you're smart enough to know there's a fucking glass ceiling yeah then you're not going to do you it you can't do it because you're going to wait for somebody else to do it yeah and that's the problem that's the problem with bigfoot so, so it's unprovable that's the problem with Bigfoot. I got attacked by a but Bigfoot. But it's, it's unprovable and undebunkable. Exactly. <laughs> it's, like it's you, so great. This lie that's it's in perfect. The, in the, if that's the best kind. It's is like If it's lie. right in the middle. You can't prove the lie is a lie. You can't prove that the truth is the truth. I got attacked by Bigfoot. Are you sure? Yes. Describe Bigfoot to me. Well. They describe a, a grizzly bear, right? And then it's like, but it looked like it knew what it was doing as intelligent. And then it's like, oh, that's a, okay. That's a little different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's like, well, it was dark. Like I thought Bigfoot had blue eyes. And do grizzly bears have blue eyes? No, they confirm don't have blue eyes or whatever. Yeah. And so then it, so starts, like a to, little bit it of... starts to get the wheel rolling and then you start to get my interest. Mm-hmm. I start to get real into it. And the it. more details that you can give is like oh, the yeah. better. Yeah. How could I make this up? I was playing Tetris. Why would I say I was playing Tetris? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think, I think that those are really fun to explore and I have never seen anything with enough evidence except for that Paul McCartney was switched out in 1966 and that's where we'll end our and show. And that's a fact. That's a that is a fact. fact I will way. fucking debate you into the ground. you with knives. Paul McCartney, the one that you see is not the Paul McCartney. And by the way, as much of a skeptic as I am about so many of these things, I saw a UFO with my own eyes with my whole fucking family in 1996. So, so deal with it, bitches. A big fat Do I know what it dick. was? No, but it was crazy because it literally was standing there in the sky. I've talked about this many times. A light standing there in the sky, way, 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 way up high. I don't know how fucking high it was. I was 12 years old. And Twink- then, twinkle there. and then, not a cloud in the whole sky. All of a sudden, a cloud forms around it in a perfect circle and it sucks inside of itself and completely dis- dissipates gone gone yep it check, was up there for like 15 check minutes. out our other episodes we've talked about this before yeah it's fucking tight. yeah also um huge shout out to the y files uh that's where i first heard about the story mm. and he does a really good job on a lot of different topics Is it he, a and, yeah okay. oh, the y files it's a channel check it out the y files he, he's pretty big so like i don't know you probably heard of him already but um he does so many topics that are so interesting and he does a really good job of investigating and towing the line of like yeah um understanding like listening but then also like creating like showing the steps the skeptics big shout out to you sir and, and also yeah. i like the name that's good because it's like the x-files but it's like the next letter yeah i think that's good. and it's like why Oh, that's even better. I didn't even think yeah, of that. It's like, that's why? really good. It's like why? <laughs> it's like why? <laughs> anyway, check out our Patreon, okay. patreon.com slash sticky S T I K K I. We put these episodes out a couple days early. Yes. We also do live Support streams, the show. Uh, crypto stream, we do free poker tournaments. I do and crypto it's a corner lot of every fun. Tuesday night, seven PM. Discord server is really fun. PST. It's a good gang over there. It's the best gang ever. And we'll see you next week. Deuces out later. Bye. Bye. Bye.